You're listening to Track Talk with the Racing Boys, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet in Olathe, or visit them online at McCarthyChevyKC.com. Welcome back to Track Talk here on Sports Radio 810 WHB and the Racing Boys Broadcasting Network. Don't forget, our number two coming up exclusively on Racing Boys. Just go to the homepage and click on Live TV, and that will take you to the in-studio cameras for Kirk and I. Hour number two, we really ramp it up and hang out with the folks on the chat room when we do that. But joining us now is a, a longtime friend of the Racing Boys and a guy that it's always good to hear great things about what's coming up at Lakeside Speedway, Mark Olson. Mark, how you doing? Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Kirk. Hi, Mark. Mark, uh, let's get right into, um, first of all, the good news that came down the line. <laughs> um, you know, we're always looking for something good, especially when it comes to the Corps of Engineers. Um, uh-huh. They are going to help the good folks over there around Walcott and, and Wyandotte County. Tell everybody the news that came down the line yesterday. Well, they send out, the uh, Unified Government sends out an electronic newsletter about, I think, about once a month. And in this week's issue, it said that the Corps of Engineers were going to replace the three damaged parts of the levee in the Walcott area. Man, how big is that? Now, no, no. It's, 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 it's huge. I mean, of course, the first thing I think about is, you know, I know this year in North Dakota and South Dakota, they're 17 inches below normal on snowfall, so... The chance of flooding this year is, you know, n- uh, null. But the fact they're going to fix the levee is is good news. Well, you know what? we There's some people, the farmers, that worry about these dry winters and mild winters. I love it just, just because it's not cold and snowy. But uh, <laughs> it sure does make a difference when we have to worry about what happens. Mark, what did they ever determine upstream? Are they going to... Is this something that they just say, hey, you know what, this is what we have to do to protect their interest up north? Um, yeah, and, and, you know, will it, that happen again? Could it happen again? Well, you know, it's it's only flooded twice in the last 100 years. Let's put that in perspective. That's true. Yeah. But the fact that up north, yeah, they've got some, oh, recreation lakes for swimming, fishing, things like that they were trying to protect. Yeah. And they've got to figure out a better way to do it. Right. Mark, I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, anytime somebody is having to deal with adversity, it, it, it seems like one rumor starts, and it, it gains momentum like a snowball and just turns into this giant ball of rumors. Yeah. And, man, yeah. have we heard all kinds of rumors, and there's no sense really going to into all of these rumors. But the, uh-huh. fact, the fact is that everything is in place to open up on schedule as planned, Tell everybody out there, that, you know, what's going on with Lakeside and squash some of these rumors that were out there. Well, we've got some more cleanup to do, obviously. You know, we have to wait till the weather gets a little bit warmer, and most of that includes painting. But as far as infrastructure, we're good. You know, I've got so many people to step forward to help out that, you know, I hate to name names because I'm going to miss somebody. Right. But a lot of people have come forward and said, I'll do this, I'll do that. And just because they love Lakeside Speedway. Yeah. Yeah, and Mark, uh, but but and, and, you know, I want to say something else. Sure. As far as rumors, people, a lot of you got my phone number. You can all get a hold of me via email. <laughs> I will answer everyone. Don't get on the chat rooms and start crap. You know, it just aggravates me. I know, I know the nature of those form boards, Mark, and they sure, are they're, they're a double edged sword. They're a great way to promote racing, but they're also. Um, they're also a form for people to go in there and be anonymous and just start crap, too. We know that. Yeah. We know yeah, that. I mean, well, that's one thing. If you send me an email, I'll answer it. But if you give me some anonymous name, and I don't know who you are, I will not answer it. And rightly so, really. Be man enough to tell me who you are, and I'll be man enough to tell you who I am. Yeah. Mark, um, I know Kirk and I have talked about it. And the only one thing that I want to talk about that's really in that rumor category but not really – um, you, you did have to have some electricity um, wiring and stuff worked on, and you're in the process of doing that, and you have great that's, volunteers, as you mentioned, but that shouldn't come into play. You should be all up and running, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, uh, Bob May with MC Electric uh, has been doing all the rewiring and stuff like that, and it's an extensive process, and uh, there's a lot to be done, but we'll get it done. 
Hey, Mark. And Lil Fritzy and his gang, you know, there's a bunch of them. I don't know who all they are. But they've come in and rebuilt. The pit concession was looked brand new. The pit shack, which is brand new. I mean, just so many people have come from so many different angles and said, we're going to come in and do this and help you out. Yeah. Mark, uh, this is Kirk. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you face right now uh, getting things open? Besides the ele- electrical issues that uh, you've already talked about, what what is the big amount of work that has to take place between now and opening night? Oh, I think right now it's, we're strictly down the electrical. I mean, there's a little cleanup left to do, but that can be done in a weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I mean, we're ready to go. Yeah. Well, you, I know me and you talked last week, and we were looking at the Long Ranger. And I don't know how much stock. Now, you've taken a look at that before. Is that that the Farmer's Almanac? Is that what you look at? Or how's that work? And, and it, are we looking for a, a wet spring? Because we don't need that right now. No, we don't need that. And I think they're looking at a dry spring. And I count on my wife to watch Farmer's Almanac. She gives me plenty of advice on what they're thinking about. But, uh, you know, I, I hate it for the farmers. You know, like last year, I hate it for everybody. But, you know, it's just... Yin and yang, what's good for one is not good for the other. Yeah, Mark, and I'm I'm hoping for a dry year. Mark, I, you, you mentioned Paige. Uh huh. Um, I've known you and Paige for gosh, almost twenty years now, probably. Uh huh. Um, how, how how tough has this been on you guys? Really, I know I know the obvious answer, but just talk. Take us through what this, how hard this has been for you and Paige and. How, how difficult is it sometimes just not to throw in the towel and say, man, is this really worth it? Because let's face it, all the rainouts that you've had over the last four or five years and the mm-hmm. adversity you've had to deal with with the flood, just how how does a couple that's put it all on the line, like you and Paige, uh, manage to get through all these hard times? Well, she's my backbone. She won't let me quit. She'll put her foot up my ass every time she gets. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just like you just got to keep moving forward. Yeah, you just keep moving forward. Have, have, have you ever thought? Have you ever thought about just saying, you know, selling it and just saying, I can't do this anymore? Have you ever wavered for a minute? Oh, you have those times when you think, you know, God, is this the right thing to be doing? You know, what am I throwing a lot of money into and getting nothing back out of? And and uh, but no, no, it's you know, when you really think about it, the bottom line is, nope, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I'm sure you've been in communication with a lot of your racers. Uh, anytime you have to shut down a season in the middle of the year, uh, there's a lot of these racers that also park their cars. Uh, and are, what have you done as far as communication with your racers uh, to make sure they all come back, those that uh, were uh, competing out at Lakeside Speedway in the early part of last year at, are most of them, if not all of them, going to be coming back? The ones that were with you in June? Yeah, I, I no, they're. I think they're. You know, ninety nine percent of them are all coming back. Uh, it was an adjustment for them, as you know, as well as it was for us. That you know, do I still want to race? Where am I going to race at? With Lakeside shut down, but no, the, all indications I get is they're coming back, and, and it, you know, I think the car count's going to grow a little bit. Talk about the car count. I look for the uh, and now. Do we call them B mods now, Mark? What do we call them right now? And and you're allowing those guys to to run the uh, lids on their car if they want to. And I think that's going to attract some new guys in there that were a little leery of running without a top. Um, talk about that process and making up your mind to allow that to happen. And, and basically, I guess changing them to, to B mods. Yeah, it's something that I thought about, and JD and I talked on and off, and. You know, my uh, original intent last year was, you know, if you're going to add another class, don't make it look like the other three classes. And we went that route. And I think the, the car count, you know, as few races we got in was growing each week as we went along. But, you know, we talked about it again this winter, and I trust J.D.'s opinion a lot. And he said, no, he said, I think we'd give him the option. So you can run, you know, the roof with no tail, or you can take the roof off and, and run tail. So we'll go that route and see what happens. I know um, I-35 Speedway and, and Mike Johnson, they kind of stepped up and tried to help out with some of the projects that you had. And we know J.D. was up there last year. He's not there this year. But uh, um, do you are you going to continue to have that relationship with I-35, the whole um, 
uh, were the Grand Nationals. There's incentive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The Border Wars, you know, goes on as far as the Grand Nationals concern. Uh, we haven't finalized things yet with Mike Schott, McCarthy, Chevrolet, but they're going to step up to the plate and add a little bonus to it. Great. So, no, that, that'll continue. Let's talk about your schedule, Mark. Uh, you've released a full schedule. You, uh, it appears as though you've added to uh, maybe some of the special events you're going to be running, USMTS for the first time, World of Outlaws coming back. Talk a little bit about the schedule you've lined up for 2012. Yeah, we've got the World of Outlaws coming back uh, June 30th on a Saturday night. And then shortly after that, USMTS, or National Championship Series, comes in on Friday, July 13th. Very excited about that. It's taken Todd and I a couple of years to finally get, you know, dates lined up. But we got it lined up this year. We've got the ACS Warrior Division coming Five. in in uh, late August, the 17th and 18th. And the Jayhawk Classic will be back this year, September 21st and 22nd. And then we'll finish off the season when the cup cars are Kansas Speedway with the uh, Clyde Ellis Lucas Oil MR- MLRA Late Model Showdown and Modified Shootout. Yeah, everybody. So it's a full schedule. It's the most aggressive schedule we've ever had. You know, I'm, I was a little surprised by that, Mark, to be honest with you. Knowing your philosophy about specials and, and how you'd trimmed back in the last few years about that, um, coming off of the flood, why did you feel the need to run more specials this year? Uh, the opportunities just came up, uh, for one thing. Actually, the only new uh, special on there is USMTS. I mean, we've always done something that third weekend in August with no, sprint that's cars. True. That's true. And, unfor- and unfortunately, there's no longer a good non-wing series around, which really disappoints me because that's what I like to bring back to this part of the country, but we can't do it anymore. Never say never about that old Sprint Bandit series coming back. <laughs> I'd love for it to come back. I know. I'd, the, love for Schumann, I'd love for Schumann to get back involved in some way, somehow. But you know, we'll we'll just see what happens. I, I will but tell I, you. I'm, 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 the, the I'm power, excited about having the Warrior Division come in. The powers that be down there at uh, Emmett Hahn's office would love to be able to bring that back. They just really wanted to concentrate on the national tour for a couple of years and get their wheels under them. And you know, with the loss of Tommy Estes, that was a big deal. as that as well? Yeah. You know. So, yeah. and, and you, did you hear Ron Schumann might be coming out of retirement as a driver? Did you hear that? <laughs> yes, I did. How about that right there? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> are, are are you working out of the office at the racetrack at all? Uh, no, no, no. Weather? The, when will you be back? Uh, uh, working we'll be out back of in the office at the track in mid March. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mark. Yeah, right. right. Go ahead. No, I said go ahead. I, I was going to ask you: Is um, I I haven't heard anything about Mike Knight. Is he going to continue to work for you? He's been oh, a, absolutely, yep. yeah. And that's another thing people need to remember: is he and Mary lost their house, you know, when the flood hit. Uh, luckily, they had insurance to cover it. Uh, they're living up north now, mm-hmm. but they've got a new home, and uh, you know, this, this thing affects a lot of people. No doubt, no doubt. Well, I, I, that would be a huge loss if you didn't have Mike out there prepping that track. So, uh, no, 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 Mike will be back. Uh, good. We, 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 we talk on a weekly basis. Well, that was a rumor, you know, that he wasn't it's coming back. Oh, I know, well, I know so, another rumor. You know, yeah. call me up and ask me or yeah. email me, and I'll tell you the truth. No, as a matter of fact, I just found out he and I were at the track last week on the same day at the same time, and we didn't know each other were out there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, well, Mark, thanks again uh, for your continue. Um, support of Lakeside Speedway and and just staying with it, bud, because I think a lot of people, most people, if not all people, were probably thrown in the towel with what you've had to deal with the last few years, and that says a lot about your character, and uh, we're happy that you're going to work through this and and get her back open. Thanks so much, Mark. Hey, and if I can, welcome McCarthy Auto Group to Racing Boys. Yeah, man, they're they're great great partners. partners. Yeah. They are tremendous partners. Yeah. Well, Two and minutes. they've been great supporters of Lakeside for over the years, and I look for that relationship to continue for a long time. Absolutely. All right, Mark. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. You bet, guys. All right. And, of course, our McCarthy Auto Group sponsors his annual Jayhawk Modify Classic mm-hmm. this year on September 21st and 22nd. And, by the way, they're the new sponsor of the Midwest Lightning Sprints. I was going to just throw that in there, that uh, it just came down the pipe yesterday that uh, – the Midwest Lightning Sprints, Bob Douglas organization and owner of Rod Inn Supply, uh, their new sponsor, McCarthy Auto Group, so that's good. Well, it's all good news from Lakeside Speedway. I think everybody was really wondering just how things were coming along, but uh, you heard it. Uh, 
All things go for the season opener, which will be coming up on April the 13th, which is Friday night. They'll have a practice session on Saturday, April 7th. And uh, Friday nights, folks, lights are going to get fixed. Everything is set. One minute. The Army Corps of Engineers is going to be working uh, on those levees. So uh, it, it's all good. Well, I will tell you, I am so happy to see that place open back up because, to be honest with you, if you would have asked me five months ago, was Lakeside Speedway going to reopen? I would have said, maybe. But we know for sure it's going to open now. And, again, um, let's just give a shout-out to all the volunteers that went out there and worked. Yeah, the Christie family. Without, that, without those volunteers, too, yeah. Lakeside might not have opened. Right. A lot of people involved. A lot of people. that track cleaned up. Yeah. I think nearly 30. 40 people showed up one day. All right, hour number two coming up on Racing Boys Radio. Uh, Kirk and I will be jumping in there, talking to all the folks on the chat room. So just go to racingboys.com, click on TV Live or Racing Boys Radio if you want to listen to it instead of watch it. Simulcast 20. of College Game Day from Columbia. Big game tonight between Kansas and Missouri. That's Who wins, Kirk? Next. Who wins? Uh, Missouri, I think. I'm right with you, Missouri. Kansas. All right, Jen <laughs> says Kansas. For Kirk, I'm Scott. We'll see you next week here on Track Talk.